welcome back to the channel welcome back to the build on uh, this video I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys here um, I'm going to make Firestone epoxy resin countertops for this this is gonna be a little table this will be just sort of like an armrest uh, and then also it'll double as a phone charging station um, or in a place to just put you know odd things but uh, USB right here it's I got to make a hole in this it's gonna go through there so this is gonna go on the left of the left seat in the van and it'll be like this and the table will just extend out and then it'll fold down flat and it'll be you know somewhere right off to the left uh, just above the seat and on the, this side of it it'll be a couple shelves just for storage and odd items and things maybe maybe a shoe storage rack for whenever we come into the van at night and we need a place to put our shoes so they're just not on the on the floor working with epoxy is really quite simple um it you know it, it's inexpensive and you just mix it well you blend your colors in and over time the colors will move and meld and smooth out and gravity will just cause it to just level out flat and it'll it comes out really well almost every time and i'll, I'll show you guys a couple techniques i've learned with uh keeping uh here's one of my buddies i always got a visitor with keeping one of my uh uh just tricks i've learned keeping dust out and things and like cat hair for me for example all right well i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna prep the table right here i'm in my living room of course as you guys know i don't have a garage or anything uh i have some painters plastic i'm gonna just plastic the whole floor the coffee table and then i'll go ahead and get everything prepped up and then we'll come back uh i'll come back and start the camera rolling once we're, we get ready to uh, to start so but uh one quick thing i'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this i have an almond uh spray paint it's over there and uh my base color is going to be a lightish almond color it's kind of like an off-white i guess um so i'll go ahead and spray paint that real quick couple coats to get the base on the wood and then the epoxy and my paints are going to come over that and that way it'll uh, it'll give this depth of clearness and thickness the epoxy uh, and paints and it won't look like wood underneath like it does now you know if i was just to do clear epoxy over this it's going to look like wood and you're gonna it, it just not not gonna look like stone or something it'll be pretty unnatural but once we paint it with a base coat to hide the wood grain and wood color then uh that'll make everything else set up and it'll, it'll come in very very nicely so so the main thing with the epoxy is that you have lots of time you have about 30 minutes so for me i'm using this one here um it's gel life from amazon anybody can find it it's about 30 bucks 32 bucks for two bottles uh so you just mix it in equal parts part a and part b one to one and we're gonna go first and uh i'll go ahead and do this one first uh just put a nice coat on it of clear and then we'll come in with some paint So one to one. So now when I'm mixing mine, I like to slowly, I'm just using a wooden chopstick here, um, slowly do it. You don't want to blend it too hard where you import a bunch of air bubbles into it. It's, it's going to have some air, but you just want to take it nice and slow and blend it. All right, and it just takes a little bit like that with some paint, mix it up. Uh, this is just going to be the accent paint to make the pattern so I already prepped them up just blend it up real quick next a little bit of green get some natural earth tones
next. A little like a maroon color. This is going to really make it look uh, nice and expensive is this color right here. I think we got a little bit of beige here. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, first thing is first, we're just going to pour everywhere here with the clear. You don't want to pour it off, stay in the middle first. You don't want it to run off the edges just yet. We want to spread it around the middle first and make sure it covers everywhere. So, okay. So now we'll go ahead and smooth it out. And it's just going to settle on its own. Um, and another thing is, you want to make sure the temperatures are the same, the wood and the epoxy. You don't want to have the wood come from outside or a storage room that's cold. Um, or you know a really hot or different temperature you want them to be kind of acclimated to the room temperature let them sit out for a while so yeah this is nice um, so we just need a little bit more on, on the edges there And you'll know when you get a thin spot because it'll look like a thin spot. And remember, we're going to come back later with a second coat. So it doesn't have to be that perfect on the first one here. You just want it to cover everything nicely. And uh, now, now it's looking good. The sides are getting wet. It's flowing over nice. So the second coat will be, the top pour will be, you know, a thick, just everywhere. So, um, you know, if you get a little bit of a thin spot, it's okay. Like right here, we can just fix that. Drop a little bit more there. Then drop a little bit there. Okay, so... So that's it for that. So now that it's nice and smooth, now we're going to go ahead and make a pattern. I want it to be like a... Kind of like a... Going out this way pattern. So now I'm going to just basically come on right here, just like that. We're gonna we're gonna mix it into it. And I know you guys are thinking like, "Oh my God, that is terrible." <laughs> it's okay. Trust me on this. It's going to be great. You say earthquake? Uh, my wife said earthquake. We're probably having a little bit of a tremor right now. You yeah. know. Japan, uh, pretty famous for some trimmers out here. So now I'm just going to add like some accents into it like that. And you want it to come over the edges. A little bit of black over here. And it's going to take a long time to set up the colors. And you have time to work with it, so... Add a little bit of tinge right there, but not too much. Okay, so you can see how that's already starting to look. It's already shiny. And we're gonna come in with some, uh, some of this reddish color here. Now we're gonna come in over it and through it. And make it look like there's just 
some natural earth tone that was in embedded into the rock. And not too much, we just want to accent it. Just like that, just nice and smooth. Make your lines even. And don't worry about how it looks right now. Of course, we're gonna fix all this. There's a little bit of accents in there. And now we want it to come over the edge make it look like it you know it's thick rock through and through okay next we're gonna do a little bit of green this is just for a little bit of earth accent into it not that much look like some type of emerald or jade that was like crushed into the rock So, and I'm working a little fast here. I know, uh, of course, I have 30 minutes for this stuff to dry. So, you know, before it starts getting too tacky. So, it's not that much of a rush. But, um, you know, it is a kind of a thin coat. And it's going to dry maybe even faster than 30 minutes. And it's warm in my house right now. So, so I kind of like that right there. All right. Next, we're going to go with the white or the beige here. This is just going to accent it in between the main colors that we want. That way it doesn't just look like wood under there. And then now we're going to pull little bits of this color and pull it through. I'm just going to pull it through. Got my gun on, it's hot, got on high. I'm just gonna show you guys how it sort of pushes the material. Watch this. I'm gonna go in the green right there first. See that how it just pushes it? This can help you meld the colors together. Now you don't want to do too much because you don't want to burn it. You can burn it. You can see that green kind of faded out. It looks nice now. It's not so, so just dominant. They kind of uh, made the green sink to the bottom and some of the other colors floated up. You can see that, so the viscosity of the white or the beige is lighter than the other paint. So you can see that's coming up to the top now. And the red out right there. And that's it. I like that right there. So we're going to go ahead and let it sit. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to boil it or anything like that, so. Um, so you can see as it heated up, it's now dripping. Uh, as it just thins it out from being warm. So you're gonna get some, uh, some air bubbles come up to the top. Don't worry about that. 
Yeah, this looks amazing. I mean, it really looks like a nice piece of real stone. So uh, I'm not too worried about the drips right now. That's just gonna let it do its thing for a minute. It's still settling up. But yeah, look what the heat did right there, how it made that. I don't know what you call that, but it just, it just, that's what it does. It, it adds this element of natural, uh, just looks like thousands of years of heat and pressure to achieve this. So, for me, I like to use the other wooden uh, chopstick that I'm using here. Uh, just wipe off the bottoms. And this, this on the bottom here, you can come back and cover the edges later if you need to. No, no big deal. And also, uh, you know, when you start this project, you're committed. And there's no, like, you know, walking away or anything. Like, for the first two hours, you got to kind of tend to it. So it does require some work. But yeah, that's just amazing how that came out like that. All right, guys, I don't want to waste any time here since we have the, the blends already made before the epoxy sets up in the cups. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Second, second one. Nice thick pour. Let that set up. Got a fork here. Yeah, it's a nice thick, even pour. That's what we want. Thick coat all the way around it. Yeah, it won't do that well on the sides at first, so you got to kind of work it into the wood. Because uh, the side of the wood is not, you know, finished smoothly like the top surface is. So uh, it just kind of wants to run off in different areas and not be smooth. So just kind of help it out. So you can, as you can see, it's nice and smooth and thick. So now we're going to go ahead and... Come again here. I want this to come this way, straight this way. So now we're gonna add some black. Next, I really like the red. The cool thing is, you know, there are no two pieces of stone that are alike, you know, so it doesn't have to be exactly like the other one.
you guys will see it'll be it'll come out this great I know it I've never done this and then didn't like it after I was finished working with the epoxy so so this is gonna be a little darker and that's what I wanted this tabletop to be a little darker than the other one a little more color because it's a smaller piece of stone so add some some of this into it You guys will see when we put some heat on it, it's going to totally change it. I like that right there. All right, change the camera angle here. So yeah, it's a little darker, um, but I like it. And things will change so the colors will continue to flatten out and meld and move around all the way until it gets hard uh, until it's so uh, hardened up you know it can't move anymore but so even how it looks right now it'll look different in 15 minutes and then it'll look different again in 15 minutes after that and so will this one you can see it's it's gotten a little lighter uh, and that one this one will lighten up as well as some of the colors just sink down to the bottom of the epoxy it'll give this more of a transparent top look to it but yeah that is just amazing how real that looks super shiny super glossy so now I'm gonna come back and uh, hit the, the edges with it you can see uh, It's just shiny, nice and smooth. So the important part was the very first coat has to be a thick pour of epoxy to where the wood is completely covered with, you know, like maybe a millimeter deep of, of epoxy. And then go ahead and put your paints into it. And then that will make it look so nice and smooth and even on, on the first go. So now tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and sand this lightly and then we're going to pour just clear over the top um, and it's going to give it some depth and that'll be the protective coat over it and you know in the finished coat so and it's going to really look like it's just stone encased in glass is the only way i can describe it okay it is now the next day it is fully dried nice firmed up uh it came out amazing so now we're going to go ahead and sand this and then we're going to just pour a thick uh, top coat of just super clear epoxy and then that's going to be it. We'll let that dry and it'll be a finished product. So if you look closely you can just really see the layers of depth of different, like I said before, uh, the paints have different viscosities and some sink to the bottom and some are midway and some float to the top like the white. Or the beige rather and it just uh it gives this layered effect that there's just um multi layers of it almost looks like stone actually but if i can come into some sunlight here not get it too bright Yeah, it came out amazing. Okay, I just sanded it very, very lightly. And you guys can see 
uh, there went my nice finish on it, but that's okay. It's going to be even better with the second coat. So the reason for sanding it for one, two coats gives it more depth and more protection because it's going to be like a countertop surface. Uh, another reason is in the drying process, you get these little micro air bubbles that will float up. And as the epoxy sets and it gets too thick, they will actually pop and then it'll leave a little crater on the top that's it'll look like a micro volcano top just a little cone with a whole crater right on the very top of it and that uh is what we want to get rid of and this one had like one or two this one had a couple right here but uh sanding it gets that nice and smooth and gets rid of them now uh and a lot of that was the mixing process of different paints pouring and pulling it on top uh, you know it's impossible to do that and not put some air into it and so anyway uh, although it looked really great this second coat is going to be the final touch that is just going to make it just really really amazing um, this one was a little bit on the white side right here as you can see sanding it down it took a little bit of that off uh, and when you sand it I just did it by hand uh, I used about, I think it was a 400 grit. You don't need a very coarse sandpaper. Use a fine sandpaper. We just want to smooth out any air bubbles and imperfections and just scour it, score it a little bit to make it, uh, make the new top coat stick to it. And um, anyway, it's going to come out really, really, really great here in the second one. Make sure, I just used a, a damp paper towel to wipe it off. Make sure it's, you get rid of all the dust and stuff from uh, sanding it. And that's it. Now we're just going to mix up. I'm going to do a whole cup pour on this one. And then I like a half a cup pour on that one. Nice and thick. Let it sit. I'm going to uh, use uh, two chairs here and some plastic. They put over it to kind of protect it at night. I don't want any dust or anything from uh, just from the room and... You know, I got cats and just as we walk by, you know, you generate dust from your clothing or whatever. I don't want any fibers floating in the air and falling on it. Uh, and that's going to mess up the final product. So we'll make sure we go ahead and, and prep it right. So we end up with the best possible product. All right, just with a couple chairs here stacked up. Got the plastic under it. Just made a little plastic uh, covering up for it. And that will help uh, any wind and just dusty things on it. And I think we're good to go with that. You're just not going to ever eliminate this unless you're in some type of uh, super filtered room. But unfortunately, that's it's not my case. Epoxy's being mixed. Again, like I say, you don't want to overkill it on the mixing and put a bunch of air bubbles in it. Just do it slow and smooth. I think that's good enough. I've been mixing it for, for a little bit. So, we're going to go ahead now and just pour it right on. Again, stay away from the sides at first. We want to keep it in the middle. And we'll get the sides last. But I just want to make sure i got enough material to cover the main part of it. And then we'll just smooth it out. And it'll start to just smooth out on its own as well. And we'll see what that looks like. I may have to come back with a little bit more. And that's okay. We'll, we have about 30 minutes of time to work here. So. We're going to come on and. Just. See what this looks like. And it. It's. Uh, has a strange. Surface tension thing going on. It just, it'll spread itself out and then in some places it just won't want to, uh, it'll just make like a, like a part that just doesn't get covered or a, a uh, thin spot, but that's okay. Yeah, we're going to have to come back in with a second coat. But yeah, not bad at all. So yeah, we want to flood this thing. Like, I mean... It's kind of expensive uh, on the second coat here because you just you have no choice but waste a lot of epoxy. But yeah, 
that's definitely at least some another color. Let me go ahead and just stop here, mix up another batch real quick. Okay, coming in with a little bit more just to flood it, thicken it up. Now this one will come around the edges because that's where it was thinnest before, and then now we just want to come across. And now it's just going to set up. That's, that's nice and thick. That's exactly what we want right there. So I don't need to touch the top. The top, it'll just lay flat on just from gravity. So I, we don't want to touch the top. Now I just want to make sure the sides are coated nice and even all the way around. There's a little spot right there. Um... And now we're just going to let gravity and time do its magic. Oh yeah, that's just sitting on it nice and getting flattening out very well. Oh yeah, that's a nice thick coat. Yep, I don't need to put any more on this. This is plenty. Yeah, that is really nice. And that is it. I don't know if you can see because the, the plastic is kind of dulling out the light, but it gives it like a like a matte look but it's actually just super smooth and there's a little dimple oh, there's a little bit right here right there I missed the spot this is where the USB charge is gonna go make sure we get that covered There's a little dimple right there. Okay. So now we're just looking for thin spots where there might be a dimple. There's not going to be a raised spot. The gravity will pull it down, but I think uh, we're good because this is poured extremely thick. So yeah. So that's it. Now we just literally don't touch it. Let it just do its thing. If you start getting some air bubbles later, we can hit it with some uh, heat on the on the heat gun, or you could spray it with some uh, isopropyl alcohol and an atomizer. But that is it. We're gonna have an amazing finished product right here. Okay, I'll come back after this and I'll show you guys once it's uh, completely finished because there's really nothing to do now. It just has to sit for like 12 hours. Anyway, this is it. I'll show this one up close. Came out just amazing. Uh, super shiny, nice, smooth, glossy finish. It's hard. It's waterproof. It's food grade uh, epoxy. So um, I'm really happy with it. And I hope you guys get out there and hopefully I shared something of some value and that'll encourage somebody to go there and just work with some epoxy, try it out. It's not hard to do. You can't mix it, uh, mess it up. You know, just uh, there's no rules to it. Mix whatever colors you desire to, to want to make your, your product look like in the end. But other than that, uh, I appreciate everyone sticking with me again. And uh, next is moving on to the flooring on the next video. So with that i'll go ahead and end it here i appreciate it once again everybody hanging out with me and we'll see you next time thanks